Welcome to History Tales, the channel that tells the story. In this video, we will talk about the life of gladiators. In ancient Rome, gladiators embodied a crucial aspect of entertainment and culture, captivating the masses with their unique blend of violence and spectacle. The history of gladiators is a fascinating journey spanning centuries of Roman history, from their inception as ritual sacrifices to their decline in the late imperial period. This essay aims to explore the evolution of gladiators, from their origins to their disappearance, focusing on key figures, their battles in the arena, lifestyle, the economy surrounding them, and the curiosities surrounding this unique phenomenon in ancient history. Origins and Birth of Gladiators The roots of gladiators can be traced back to the ancient ritual practices of the Etruscans and Romans, where combat between prisoners or slaves held sacred significance and was considered a form of sacrifice to the gods, especially during the funeral ceremonies of prominent individuals. These combats initially took place in intimate and sacred contexts, as part of religious rituals and commemorative ceremonies. The very first recorded combat occurred in 264 BC, when three pairs of gladiators clashed in the Roman Forum for the funeral rites of the patrician Brutopera. Over time, these ritualistic combats evolved into increasingly popular public spectacles, transitioning from sacred ceremonies to forms of public entertainment. During the Roman Republican period, gladiatorial combat further developed becoming an integral part of Roman festivals and celebrations, such as circuses and religious festivals. During these festive occasions, gladiators were recruited from various sources. Some were slaves or prisoners of war captured during Roman conquests, while others were convicted criminals or individuals who sold their freedom to avoid harsher punishment. However, not all gladiators were slaves or criminals. Some free citizens voluntarily enlisted in gladiator schools to gain fame, fortune, or political favors. Gladiator schools, managed by Lenistus, were responsible for the training and preparation of gladiators for combat in the arena. Here, gladiators underwent rigorous physical and technical training, learning to master various weapons and combat styles. Lenistus invested considerable resources in training their gladiators, hoping to profit from victories in combat and the attraction of spectators. Lifestyle of Gladiators The life of a gladiator was characterized by extreme hardship and constant precariousness. After being recruited or sold to gladiator schools, they underwent rigorous and brutal training designed to turn them into skilled arena fighters. This training not only involved physical skills, but also the mental resilience necessary to face the deadly challenges of the arena. Gladiators lived in Spartan conditions within the schools, with rudimentary accommodations and strict discipline imposed by their Lenistas. The owners of gladiator schools, they were constantly monitored and subjected to strict rules, as their survival depended on their performance in the arena. Daily training was grueling and included a series of intense physical exercises, simulated combat, and weapon practice Gladiators had to master a wide range of weapons and combat techniques, from sword and shield to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat. Each day was a struggle to perfect their skills and prepare for the next battle in the arena. During training and combat, gladiators were subject to frequent and severe injuries. Injuries were treated with rudimentary care, often without any adequate medical attention. Hygienic conditions within gladiator schools were poor increasing the risk of infections and complications from injuries. Additionally, gladiators faced the constant threat of death in the arena. Every combat represented a challenge for survival, where failure meant death or serious injury. Despite this, many gladiators accepted this fate with courage and dignity, facing their destiny with determination and resilience. Economy and Organization of Combat the organization of gladiator combat was a highly lucrative industry in ancient Rome. The owners of gladiator schools, known as Lenistas, invested substantial resources in training and equipping their gladiators, hoping to reap significant profits from victories in the arena. These Lenistas operated training schools throughout the empire, attracted by the potential profits from the growing popularity of gladiator shows. The economy of gladiator combat was based on a complex business model. 
Lannisters rented out their gladiators to show promoters, known as editors, who organized the events and sold tickets to spectators. These editors bore the costs of organizing the show, including arena rental, security, and other logistical aspects, and shared the profits with Lannisters based on the success of the shows. Gladiator combats took place in huge amphitheaters, such as the famous Colosseum in Rome, where thousands of people gathered to watch the spectacles. These amphitheaters were often imposing architectural works, designed to maximize the visibility and excitement of spectators during combat. Gladiator shows were often accompanied by other forms of entertainment, such as animal fights, public executions, and performances by acrobats and musicians, contributing to a vibrant and engaging atmosphere. Gladiators were divided into different categories based on their weapons and combat techniques, each attracting a specific audience with its own preferences. Some of the most common classes of gladiators included mermillos, armed with short swords and shields, rishiri, armed with tridents and nets, and secutors, armed with long swords and shields. Each class of gladiator had its own distinctive style and combat strategy, offering a variety of shows for spectators. Curiosities and Anecdotes The life of gladiators is surrounded by numerous curiosities and anecdotes that add a touch of charm and mystery to their history. These stories allow us to take a more intimate look at the life and culture surrounding these brave arena fighters. One of the most fascinating curiosities concerns the pseudonyms or nicknames adopted by gladiators. Often, they chose intimidating or heroic names to enhance their fame and appeal to the public. Names like the Butcher, the Death Charger, or the Colossus were common among gladiators, helping to create an aura of mystery and excitement around their figures. These names not only served to identify them in the arena, but became part of their identity and reputation. Some gladiators managed to earn their freedom through victories in the arena. The gladiator demonstrated exceptional skill and courage during combat. Their Lannista could grant them freedom as a reward for their valor. In other cases, the gladiator's contract could be sold to a new owner willing to release them. However, it is important to emphasize that freedom for gladiators was a privilege rarely granted, and many of them remained slaves for life or died in the arena. Another interesting aspect concerns the role of fans towards gladiators. Some of these fighters became so popular that they were hailed by fans as true heroes. Their victories sparked enthusiasm and admiration among the audience, who supported their favorites with cheers of encouragement and displays of affection. This relationship between gladiators and fans added an element of spectacle and engagement to events in the arena, turning combats into true expressions of passion and devotion. Decline and End of Gladiators The rise and fall of gladiatorial combat represent one of the most significant transformations in the history of ancient Rome. Over time, interest in these martial spectacles began to wane, marking the end of an era that had dominated the collective imagination for centuries. Towards the end of the Roman Empire, new forms of entertainment and spectacles began to gain popularity among the population. Chariot races, circus games, and other forms of spectacle became more appealing to the public, offering a variety of attractions and thrills that surpassed simple gladiator combats. These new shows were often accompanied by special effects, acrobatics, and skill challenges that captured the audience's imagination in more innovative and engaging ways. Growing moral criticisms of the brutality and cruelty of gladiator combats contributed to their decline. Philosophical and religious movements, such as emerging Christianity, promoted values of compassion and mercy, questioning the morality of a spectacle based on violence and death. These criticisms led to a decrease in public interest in gladiator combats and the adoption of laws and regulations that limited or banned such spectacles in many parts of the empire. The last documented gladiator combat took place in 404 AD when Emperor Honorius issued an edict prohibiting gladiator combats in the Roman Empire. This prohibition marked the official end of an era that had dominated Roman culture for centuries. With the abolition of gladiator combats, their training schools gradually disappeared along with the profession of gladiators themselves. 
The end of gladiator combats represented not only the end of a popular spectacle but also the collapse of an entire industry and culture that had thrived for generations. Gladiators represent one of the most iconic and controversial institutions of ancient Rome, symbolizing courage, sacrifice, and spectacle. Their life and fate in the arena reflect the complexities of Roman society and its ambitions, while their decline marks the end of an era of brutal yet undeniably fascinating entertainment. The memory of gladiators still lives on today through popular culture and our understanding of ancient history. Thank you very much for watching our video on History Tales, the channel that tells history. If you found it interesting, please like and subscribe so you don't miss the next episodes. See you next time.